the urgency with the bubble yesterday, Thursday and Friday are incredible. Uh, you get more games on this Thursday and Friday than you do next weekend in the tournament, but the tournament's the tournament. Like I get it, but it is, it's why, I mean, I love this sport. I love this month. We get with this, this ramp up. It's just, there's nothing there. No other sport has anything close to this. And you, because of stories like Ohio state, because of stuff like, let me transition here uh, to the ACC because of NC state. I mean, uh, we, we, I, I love when we get to a semi and a high major league and you still got a bid thief out there. That is NC state. NC State is going to play Virginia late in the semifinal there. The other side of it is UNC playing Pitt. Pitt took out Wake Forest. It's another team that's a good story, and I thought it was so awesome for the ACC to recognize Steve Forbes and his family. Janetta, his wife, was there. The stroke, She's recovering from the stroke. His children were there. They were honored. It was incredible, and I don't think Wake Forest has the resume to get into the NCAA tournament. It lost to Pitt. Pitt is now trying to pit. <laughs> take a, if Pitt wins against UNC Parish, oh, we're going to have to have a conversation about the Panthers. They are they are knocking on the door, and the ACC semis here on Friday night uh, will bring just as much urgency as the Big East, without question. Um, and I'd love to know where you land, or if you took a peek at Pitt's case as of Friday morning, because it's been it's been once or twice removed from the cut line for a long time, but you really start looking around beats UNC GP. The case will be very compelling. Um, I still think they got work to do. I'll, I'll agree with you. We can talk about it if they beat UNC, but right now, you know, nine and eight in the first two quadrants, but they do have the two quadrant three losses only four quadrant one wins and five of the losses are outside of quadrant one. They're close. I think, I think a win over North Carolina gets you to what five and five in quadrant one. Now you're yeah. 10 and eight in the first two quadrants with two quadrant three losses. Yeah. They win that one beat North Carolina. I'm, I'm, I'm certainly happy to talk about it. Now, if you're hearing those numbers and then you heard me say, you know, Michigan state is a perfect example. What's so why aren't they in? Because the committee obviously is value, evaluating these teams and these schools based on the overall difficulty of their schedules and non-conference. Pitt is 344 non-conference strength of schedule. It's not even close to the likes of, say, a Michigan State. So if you play easier teams, you're more likely to get those wins, obviously. And when you play easier teams and then you wind up with a couple of Q3 losses, those things weigh you down. So Pitt is actually a, it is a compelling case. If it beats UNC, uh, it might well have a winning case. But a reminder to our viewers and our listeners, there is a long history, and I personally have zero issue with this because I, I, I advocate, and I think Parrish and I disagree on this, but I actually I advocate for the selection committee, for the betterment of the sport, to punish the teams that don't schedule well in the non-conference. That are These high majors are more than equipped to challenge themselves to the utmost end of their abilities and for the ones that that opt not to, and if you're if you wind up in the 300s, I basically think there's no excuse. If you're a high major program and your non-con schedule winds up landing anywhere from 300 to 362, no excuse. And so if you wind up getting held out because of that, I personally have no issue with it. The sport needs to be better with the best games possible in November and December, and there needs to be incentive to have a high majors play games that actually matter and more of them. That could be what holds Pitt out. But if it beats UNC. I could very easily be swayed to have the Panthers in the field. For what it's worth, Jerry Palm does have Pitt as the last team in as of this morning. Um, Look at that. But but if they were to lose, mm -hmm. then um, you know I don't know that it would hurt you too much, but it certainly doesn't help to lose. It's not helpful to lose, um, even if it won't hurt you too much. But when you combine that with the likelihood of the bubble shrinking between now and Selection Sunday, being the last team in the field, according to Jerry Palm, before your last loss, if it is indeed a loss today, that's just, you're not going to feel real great. If they win, I think we can talk a little bit. They lose today. I think things get harder. And I want to be clear. Everything you said about non-conference scheduling is true. And the committee does care about it. I don't. I don't think that should be held against you. I don't care how you schedule. I just care about what have you done. And if you get to, to Selection Sunday and you haven't done enough, well, then I'll say, well, you should have scheduled more aggressively. 
But if you've done enough to get in, like if your body of work is good enough to put you in, I would never then look at your non-conference strength of schedule and say, but look at this. I'm only, I'm only looking at the body of work so much so that when I'm doing the top 25 and one, I never look at strength of schedule or non-conference strength of schedule. I don't care how you schedule. I care what you've done. What have you accomplished? What have you not accomplished? So I, I think it's crazy that that is such a big factor in that room or a factor at all, but it is something the committee cares about. And there is a list of schools over the years that were right on the cut line and they get left out and they bring the committee chair to the CBS broadcast center and somebody asks him, Hey, so this team was right there. What, 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 what made you cut them at the last minute? And, and they say, well, if you look at their non-conference strength of schedule, it was 314. That happens all, it seems like every year. And if Pitt does get left out with a, with a loss today, yeah. That'll that'll probably be the, the the and somebody asked the committee chair on Sunday that'll probably be the answer you get. I think if Pitt beat, you know, I'm not going to go that far. I, want, I was going to say I think if Pitt, Pitt beats Carolina, it's getting in for sure. I can't go that far with that non-con SOS. We'll see. I would be I would be very swayed by its overall resume with a win over UNC, but it's got to beat UNC. We'll see about that. NC State uh, getting to this round, uh, obviously uh, an inspiring. An inspiring story here for the Wolfpack. Kevin Keats has been on the hot seat, but as I wrote recently at CBSSports.com, I didn't think that he was going to lose his job. They've beaten Louisville, Syracuse, and now the win over Duke. Duke goes home. There's never been a national champion that lost its first NCAA, or excuse me, its first conference championship uh, tournament game. So keep that in mind when you fill out your brackets next week. Uh, 